In this overview video, we're going to look at the important concepts of grouping and baking components. Within Aspire, one of the most powerful features is its ability to let you build the part with the flexibility of single components. As you progress with your design though, it will become necessary to join these pieces together in order to make more complex objects and to keep your part organised. The grouping and baking will help you to achieve this need of joining components so that you can act on them as if they were a single entity. When you group individual components, it's still going to retain the individual pieces within the group and these can always be ungrouped to get back to the original constituent objects. Having a group will allow you to make certain edits such as moving, resizing, tilting and fading all the components within it together. These tools do not require the parts to be joined for good. Certain functions in Aspire will require the components to be joined at a deeper level though. Tools such as sculpting, smoothing, trimming and distorting components will need to act as if it was a single component entity. So if you need to use one of those um, tools on multiple selected components or a group, then the software will need the objects to be baked. This terminology with using the word baked is based on the analogy of a cake or a cookie that is made from say flour, eggs, sugar and other ingredients. But once it's been baked it takes on a new state and you couldn't break it back down into those original ingredients again. We'll take a few moments now within the software to show you some of these tools. We'll show you how to group components, we'll show you how to bake components, we'll show you some of the differences and effects that this has on the part. But it should also be noted that these important concepts are covered and referred back to many, many times throughout all the rest of the tutorials. So here in the example we have, a bunch of grapes is individual components which have been copied and moved around in order to create the layout we were looking for. We can see in the component tree all of these are separate components in the list. I can click here to drag this down so we can just see how many there are and this is quite a long list of components that we've got here and certainly it's going to become difficult for me to continue to work and add new components without doing something about organising them. In addition, what I'd like to do is take these grapes and act on them as if they were a single object and fade them down so that they tuck under the leaf. Now I can do that using the group option because I can use the fade and the tilt and no, certain other edits on a group without needing to bake these. So if I go ahead and select the first item in the list, I'm going to hold shift and select the last item that's called grape in the list there. I'm not selecting lift and stem and I'm going to right mouse click and choose the option to group. We can see that's closed up so that I have a single name at the top here. I can move my menu divider back up again. What denotes this as a group is two things. One, it's been given a name with the word group in it, but more importantly to the left here I can see this little plus mark and if I click on the plus mark it will show me the constituent pieces that are still within my group. So now when we click to select in the 2D view here on the grapes, it's not going to select just one of them, it's going to select the whole bunch because that's a single group. I can go now and make certain edits to this as a complete group. If I click on it for instance and we stretch it a little to make it slightly larger, we can see that that changes every single entity within the group there. Now we can go ahead and take this and fade it down, which is what I was intending to do before. We come over to the properties. I'm going to choose the option to fade, click to set the anchor at the point and then inside here I'm just going to fade that down, I can increase that value until I'm happy, we can see there that that is being faded down over the length of our group so that those grapes now tuck under the leaf and we can see that reflected in the grayscale by the fact that white is the higher area fading down in towards the leaf there. So you can see, even though those objects still exist as individual parts within the group, I'm able to make edits to the complete group using certain functions within the software. It should be noted that when you ungroup a set of objects within a group, that some of the things you've done to them may no longer be applied to those parts. 
For instance, in this case, we've changed the size of these objects and they'll retain their new size when we ungroup them because in effect, it's just individually scaled each one within the group. However, we've also gone ahead and applied a fade. Now the fade has been applied over the course of the entire thing as if it was a single object. And therefore, if we go ahead and ungroup this now, we'll see that the fade no longer applies to the individual pieces because there'd be no way to apply the same fade over each of those individual objects. So if we come up to the group, right mouse click and select ungroup, we can see that it'll go back to its original pieces and now we can see once more that these grapes are sticking up and poking through the leaf. If I just go ahead and hit Ctrl Z to undo that so it goes back to the group and back to being faded, we can see how that change was when we ungrouped those back into the individual pieces. And the main thing with that is just to be aware that sometimes if you make certain changes to the groups, they're not going to be retained by the objects within it when the parts no longer group together. So as we mentioned at the start of this video, there are certain functions within Aspire that will only act on a single component. And therefore, if we choose one of those functions while we have more than one component selected, the software will require to bake that into a single object. Now we know in our part as we have it now, we have a group of a whole bunch of individual components for the grapes, and we have another single component which is the leaf and stem. So if I was to select both of these and I wanted to go ahead and use the smoothing filter on them in order to smooth them all together, that is going to require them to be baked into a single part. Now I have two ways that I can achieve that. If I know that ahead of time, I can come over and I could click on the icon to bake the se selected objects into a single component. We click on that, it'll go ahead and create a new single object if I click off and select, you can see that's made up of everything that I had selected. Now what may be a little confusing here is that this has the word group in its title, but that's just derived from the fact that the, one of the old components here that was used to create this name had the word group in it already. So we've got grape group baked. In effect, it's just a single component and the baked tells us that. And we can also tell by the fact that there's no plus over on the left hand side here to open that up and look at the pieces in it if it was a group. If we want to make sure not to confuse ourselves, we could just right mouse click and rename and call that something like all baked so we know what it is. Now that that's a single component object, we can come down, select it, choose something like the smoothing filter. And I can go ahead now and apply that smoothing and we'll just whack that right up there so you can see the effect of it. And that has smoothed everything together. And as I said before, that function and certain other functions will only work on what is effectively a single component. Now, as with most functions in Aspire, you can undo the baking and we can undo the smoothing we just did here too. So let's go ahead and just click and do that. We'll hit Control Z in order to undo the smoothing. Control Z again in order to undo the um, baking function that we went through. So now you can see we're back to the individual pieces again. So it isn't impossible to reverse it, but you will need to do that based on being able to undo it in the same way as the other functions work with the undo in Aspire. Now, if you're going to go into a function that requires the part to be baked, it's not essential that you hit the baking icon. If we go ahead here now and just reselect both these objects again, if I choose a function where it's going to require the parts to be baked together, such as the smoothing, then it'll pop up a warning that tells me these components must be baked before I can carry on with whatever operation I've selected. I can either hit OK to continue or we can hit cancel in order to go back if I'm not sure that I'm ready to commit to that. If I hit cancel and hit OK, then you can see that it's just gone back to the individual parts. If you're not sure that you want to lose your original pieces, then the best thing to do before you use a function that requires baking is to make a duplicate. The easiest way to keep that organized is to take the items that you plan to use in the function that requires the bake, to right mouse click, group them together, to right mouse click and create a duplicate, and then to take that duplicate and to use that for the function. So now we could take this, I could come into the smoothing, 
it tells me that it's going to require them to be baked so I can hit OK. I can apply the smoothing filter as I want to and now I have my newly edited smoothed um, baked component but I also still have the original here if I turn that off we're back to this one that's made up of my constituent pieces. So there was a quick overview where we've discussed um, grouping and baking components. As we mentioned before, this is an extremely important concept, but you will see it referred to again and again throughout the tutorials.